Uh, yesterday on the radio, I heard some uh, biologists say that one of the big mysteries in biology is why creatures are sexual versus all of them being asexual. You know, asexual creatures just reproduce um, by themselves. They don't need to have sex with anyone. They don't have to combine their chromosomes with anything else to make, an, to make offspring. Sexual creatures, you need two people to mix their chromosomes together, and then uh, out pops a new person. I don't... I don't know if I'm missing something here, maybe I'm nuts, but I always thought that was, it was kind of obvious what the answer to that was. You get more variation when you can combine things and you can evolve much more quickly. Um, because if you have an organism that can, that can just mutate on its own, you, know, you might get the occasional good characteristic that it'll be able to pass on but it'll be very difficult to combine that good characteristic with some other creature's good characteristic who also you know, evolved it on its own. Um, so they can, ha they can have these two different really cool characteristics and they'll just end up diverging into different types of creatures. Whereas with sexual creatures, if you have one person with a really cool characteristic and another person with a really cool characteristic, they can get together and there's a chance that some of their children will have combined both of these cool characteristics and you'll just it's it's possible to to promote the uh, the more positive characteristics in a creature evolutionarily speaking than it is when they don't combine like maybe you've got your asexual creature that's just linearly like you know, procreating itself, uh, mutating a little bit each time, and it, you know, maybe it has this really cool characteristic that's get, getting it to keep surviving, but it could also have some weakness in there that is just being passed along with this good characteristic. Um, so, and when that weakness becomes a problem, the the whole the whole bunch of creatures can get wiped out, and that good characteristic can just be gone. But if you have sexual creatures you know you've got you've got the same good and bad characteristic in this person right and then they'll they'll be able to spread it around and mix with other people's good and bad characteristics and then presumably i mean this doesn't work in our current culture because everyone can procreate i mean that's basically how our culture works now but historically speaking not humans well historically speaking humans or taking wild animals the, the ones with the best characteristics will survive and pass them on and the weakest characteristics will just die out and they'll and it, it compounds every every generation I mean you just get tiny tiny changes every generation but they do compound and add together um, whereas with an asexual creature you you can't you can't add the good characteristics together you just have to take this one creature and you know they they accidentally mutate some good characteristic. I mean, good and bad, it's all very subjective, but I'm just using the words. And I don't want to go into a whole philosophical argument about what's good and bad. Um, but anyway, you've got this, char this asexual creature with a good characteristic, and the only way it can get, you know, a good characteristic that some other creature has is just by accidentally mutating it itself. So it has to go through generations and generations and just hope that statistically somewhere in there uh, more good characteristics pop in. Whereas, you know, with the sexual creatures, you can just take them from all over and just combine them into like super beings. And actually, it's scientifically speaking, I would say that humans are doing a really bad job right now because they're not taking this into consideration. Because... Um, you know, with with an asexual creature, you don't have a choice of who, of what, of, you don't have a choice of what genes you pass on to the future. But as sexual creatures, we can choose our mates, and we can choose to combine people who will make, I mean, it's, who will make stronger people for the for a future generation, and you won't have as many sick pe sick people and stuff. Now, this whole idea, eugenics got a really bad name when Hitler got a hold of it because, you know, he kind of went crazy and decided, oh, I'm just going to gas millions of people. And, well, he, he kind of 
destroyed the idea of eugenics, um, which is, you know, basically the idea that we have battery change. Anyway, I'm sure I'm going to get yelled at by some people and religious people and I don't know, someone's going to yell at me about this, but, you know, we, we do have the ability, the opportunity to control our evolution to a large degree, um, but in our current culture, at least the one I've been exposed to, that's, that's not taken into consideration at all. In fact, the weaker people are given more assistance, they're given more advantages, which I mean, I don't want to get into social commentary about, you know, compassion and who's nice and who's bad. I'm just saying from a scientific standpoint, uh, evolutionarily speaking, that that kind of goes downhill um, in the long run, the more generations you go through. Yeah, someone's going to yell at me for that. Anyway, that's what I think. And I'm sure I could go on and on, but I'm just going to go eat some bananas instead.